Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Peng Wang from MIT, and this work is done in collaboration with Di Wang, who is unrelated to me, and uh, my PhD advisor, Adam Chipala. So this, this talk is about a new functional language we call TIMO, uh, whose type system can help you reason about the time complexities time complexities of your programs. And it also supports complicated uh, invariants in data structures. All right, so uh, many of us work on software verification. But uh, for most of the time, we only verify uh, the uh, functional correctness of our programs. But what about non-functional properties of programs, like its performance? So we care about verifying the performance or type complexity of programs for several reasons. Firstly, we want to avoid performance bugs. Uh, we call there's a, we say there's a performance bug if the time complexity of the program is much worse than the programmer expects. Performance bugs can be really annoying because it can seriously disrupt user experience. And knowing the time complexity of your program can also be of great, great economic concerns. Uh, for example, uh, in Amazon AWS, and uh, particularly in a service called Lambda, Amazon charges you by the number of invocations you make to a certain service. So in order to know how much money your program will cost, you better know the number of such invocations your, programmers, uh, your program makes. And also, in the Ethereum framework, according to the EVM bytecode specification, every instruction requires certain amount of gas to be evaluated. So you need to get an estimate of how much uh, gas in total your Ethereum smart contract uh, will cost in order to, to avoid uh, uh, run out of gas exceptions. And uh, last but not least, uh, a mismatch in time complexity can also open up security vulnerabilities. For example, a DOS attack was reported because some implementations of open hash tables had a worst case complex time complexity that, it, that is much worse than the average case. So for, for all those reasons, we want some formal guarantee of time complexity. The static analysis and the guarantee of time complexity has actually been an active uh, research field for many years. The existing work largely falls into uh, two camps. The first camp tries to build a push button, push button systems where the programmer just needs to write normal programs and the system can fully automatically come up with an estimate of the total running time of your uh, program. So that sounds good. But uh, the problem with this approach is that they usually only work in restrict restricted domains or they only support a certain kind categories of complexities like linear or polynomial complexities. And uh, when the analysis fails, those, system, those systems usually do not allow the user to provide hints to help the analysis. The other camp, on the other hand, tries to build full-fledged proof systems to reason about this time property. But the, pro the problem with that approach is that usually the programmer needs to write many proofs, which can be tedious. Our approach, Timo's approach, is a middleway approach. We allow the users to write uh, annotations to be used as specifications and hints. And we use an SMT solver powered type checker to automatically discharge the verification conditions or VCs to avoid writing many proofs. Timo uses three core techniques. It uses uh, a thing we call index types to encode those times and sizes. And it uses refinement types to, to put constraints on those times and sizes, and also to encode invariants of data structures. And lastly, it uses a big O inference engine 
to infer, automatically infer big O complexities of programs automatically without uh, user annotations. So as the outline of the remaining talk, I will give three examples of TEMO programs and uh, then briefly summarize the contributions of this paper. Then I'll talk about the formal language definition and uh, its type soundness theorem. I will also describe how the big O inference engine works. And lastly, I will show our evaluation results on a bunch of example programs we tried TEMO on. Right, so our first uh, TEMO example is the fold left uh, function on lists. TEMO can be seen as an extension of the ML language, ML type system. So this is just uh, the normal ML code for, for the left. Now, uh, let's look at what the type of this fold L function is. So this is its normal ML type. Uh, the central idea of TEMO is to use times to reason about the running time bounds of functions. We put a number above the error in function types to mean an upper bound of the running time of this function. And because uh, the running time of function usually depends on its, the size of its input, so we also put a, add a number to types like list. So for list, it means the length of the list. So the, the whole type, entire type uh, here means that uh, given a argument function which can be finished within time m, the whole function fold L will be finished within time m plus 4 times n. So the, the constant number 4 here comes from our cost model. Our cost model is very simple. It's just to count the number of function applications or technically beta reductions. So we, we can see there are four beta reductions uh, in every recursion of this function, and I'll uh, show them as circles here. Right. And uh, because we want this function to work with any m and n, we universally quantify them. So this m and n are called indices. And uh, indices are classified by sorts. We use capital N here to mean the sort of natural numbers. Okay, now let's put those ideas into the actual code. First, uh, we put a, a uh, index of natural number uh, into the list to, uh, and uh, we can see here why this uh, index is the length of the list. It's because uh, for the new case, the index is required to be zero, and for the const case, it's re required to be n plus 1, where n is the index for the tail list. Nextly, we use this funny box notation to mean the error on the, uh, to mean the number on the error. And for recursive functions, the programmer is required to provide an annotation, uh, which is the overall time bound of this recursive function. And lastly, we introduce all the variables. So when we type check uh, this, function, this, this program, the type checker will generate a VC that is shown here. Uh, this VC comes from the requirements that the running time of the function body, uh, especially the expression in the second branch, uh, should be bounded by the overall time bound. And in the VC, uh, the number n prime is the length of the uh, tail list access. And this VC will be automatically discharged by an SMT solver. Our second ex uh, demo example is merge sort, which I will use to show the uh, use, usage of big O complexities. The first feature uh, I want to highlight here is how you specify time bound. So unlike in the previous example where we use an explicit number uh, to be the time bound. Here we just say that the time bound is some function t applied to m and n. This t is also an index. Uh, we call it a function index. And its sort is this big O something something. This big O sort is just a syntax sugar for a refinement sort. A refinement sort is 
some sort refined by some constraints. And in this talk and in this paper, we use this binary relation between functions to mean that the first function belongs to the big O class of the second function. Now, the second uh, important function feature is that the actual definition of this index t is omitted by the programmer. And we will see how the type checker will handle this case. Now, when we type check uh, this program, uh, type checker will generate uh, a VC, uh, as shown here. Uh, this VC is very typical for divide and conquer algorithms. And uh, uh, the number of cell and the floor of n divided by 2 comes from the type of split which says the sizes of the two returned lists have those numbers, uh, those sizes respectively. Now, because T is unknown, the VC discharger needs to both come up, uh, figure out what this T is and, and to prove that this VC is true. So how does it do that? Well, it invokes the power of the master theorem. What the master theorem tells us is basically that when we see a recurrence that looks like this, we can prove that such a T exists that belongs to some specific big O class. So according to the master theorem, we know that this VC is true. But the master theorem still doesn't tell us, tell us what T is exactly. So it seems like we still have a problem. Well, what saves us then is a mechanism called abstract syntax. So this abstract, in, uh, abstract index, this ab abstract in index mechanism dictates that outside of this code, only the sort of T is visible to the outside world, not its definition. So not knowing that actual definition of T will not be a problem for us. Our last table example is uh, red black trees. Uh, you don't need to remember how red black trees work. I just want to use uh, this example to highlight two points. The, the first point is that in Timo, there is no built-in notion of size. The programmer can choose to index a data type in whichever way she likes. For example, uh, the RP tree here is indexed by three indices. Uh, they are uh, the total size of the tree, the color of the root node, and the black height. The second point I want to make here uh, and that uh, one motivation for having refinement sorts uh, in Timo, other than to support uh, big O sort, is to encode invariants of data structures. For example, this invariant here means that if uh, the color of a node is red, then the color of both its children must be black. Uh, so the contribution of this paper includes a novel use of refinement sorts for complexity analysis with invariants. And to see how Timo works, we tried it on a bunch of example programs. And we also fully formula formalized the, the language and its type soundness proof in Coq. Now let's dive into the formal language definition. Uh, first, its syntax. Uh, please don't uh, read this slide. I, I just want to highlight some uh, language features here. So the, the first uh, uh, point is that a Timo actually consists of two sub-languages. First, we have the turn language, which is classified by types. And then we have the index language, which is classified by, classified by sorts. And the types are indexed by indices. And uh, this uh, little index sort slash sort language is a dependent type system because a refinement predicate can mention other indices that appear before it. Then uh, there are some uh, language features I want to highlight. Uh, firstly, we uh, have existential types to encode the abstract index mechanism that we have seen before. And also we have uh, length indexed arrays to support uh, multiple array based algorithms. 
uh, the, the runtime behavior of Timo is modeled by what we call few augmented uh, operational semantics. So uh, one feature you don't uh, always see otherwhere is uh, that uh, a runtime configuration has a number R, which we call a few. A beta reduction, as shown in this rule, will reduce uh, the amount of few by one unit. And if our starting few is less than one, then the evaluation, then we run out of few and the evaluation is stuck. For the type system, I will only uh, discuss the introduction and the, the elimination typing rule for function type. So first, uh, uh, we will look at the, uh, let's look at the typing judgment. So a typing judgment has a, an index part uh, which is the upper bound of the time uh, we need to evaluate the, the expression E to a value. Now, to show that uh, abstract, uh, uh, lambda abstraction has a function type with a time bound I, we just need to show that the function body can be evaluated within time I. And the total, fun uh, the total time to uh, evaluate a, fun a function application, E1, E2, is the sum of the time to evaluate E1 and E2, plus the time to evaluate the function body, plus one for a beta reduction. Uh, the soundness theorem of the Timo's, of Timo's type system in plain English uh, said that, basically said that, even an amount of few that is no less than what is estimated by the type system, a well-typed program with this few will never go wrong or run out of few. And you can check out the paper for the formal definitions of this theorem. Now let's, uh, let me talk about, explain how the big O inference engine works. So it's basically uh, just a heuristic pattern matching. We look at all the VCs and we look for VCs uh, in this form. And the forms of uh, the A part can have several cases. So in, in one case, if uh, the form of, if A is in this particular form, then we know that this VC comes from a divide and conquer algorithm and we can use the master theorem. As an alternative case, if A is in this form, then we know this VC comes from a common recursion scheme where each recursion reduces the uh, size of the input by some constant number, like one or two. So this is a case uh, in functions like uh, map and fold. So we can, in this case, we can also have a conservative estimation of the Bagel class. So lastly, uh, the uh, this table shows the evaluation results right, uh, of using Timo on 17 uh, benchmark examples, example programs. Uh, the third column is the time to run the type checker and the uh, big O inference engine and the SMT solver. So each, each example program can be fully type checked within half a second. The fifth column is the number of lines of code with annotations. And the last column shows uh, asymptotic complexities for some representing top level functions. So I want to highlight some points in this table. Uh, firstly, some of our examples have fairly complicated uh, data structure invariants like red black trees, brown trees, and the binary heaps. And secondly, uh, uh, other than, uh, besides uh, supporting worst case complexity, we also support amortized complexity. We prove the amortized complexities of function Q, functional queues and the dynamic tables. I didn't touch upon uh, amortized complexity. You can look at the paper for details. And the last point uh, I want to make is that uh, many of our examples are array based uh, because Timo support arrays. Right, you are uh, invited to uh, read the paper. The paper has a full language definition and the discussion of our Koch formalization. And it also has a detailed discussion of amortized complexity and uh, the annotation burdens of each our, of our example programs. And with that, I will finish my talk and welcome questions. Thank you.